everybody, Anthony here with Jess Winging a Barbecue, and this is the cooking show where I pretend to know what I'm doing enough to hopefully convince you, or trick you rather, into hitting that subscribe button and follow me on my, all of my other social media platforms. But anyway, I digress. Today we have beef ribs, one of my favorite things to cook. They turn into a nice little almost like mini briskets on a stick. So we're gonna get these things seasoned up, get them out on the smoker, and hopefully have some really nice lunch for Father's Day. By the way, all my other fathers out there, happy Father's Day. I am wearing my Father's Day gift today from my kids and my wife. Dumbbells, deadlifts, and diapers. So, today we are going to be Seasoning up our beef ribs with one of my favorites, Grill Girls Beef Rub. But I did go ahead and add a little bit. I'm about almost empty here. <clears throat> what I did add to it was a good amount of black pepper, just coarse ground black pepper. And stick with me here. Taster's Choice Nescafe instant coffee. Two packets of this. I rolled it in between my fingers to break it up real nice and fine. And I mix that into here. This is going to give our our ribs a little bit of a coffee flavor that goes really well with beef. I like it like that. And of course, as I mentioned on my other video and like I like to do with my briskets, we're going to follow it up with some Montreal steak room just to give it some texture. As far as trimming goes, as you can see, not much trimming needed on these. The fat cap isn't too too much. I did take off a little bit of hard fat here on the middle of these ribs. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. You want to leave the membrane on beef ribs as opposed to any type of pork ribs because these are actually going to help keep these together. Because as these cook, they're going to really plump up. They're going to pull back away from that bone a little bit and they're going to look really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is, to save you the pain of watching me season these, I'm going to cut the camera, season these up, and then we'll go outside and get the smoker fired up to show you what we're going to do outside. Alright everybody, we are all seasoned up. Just wanted to show you before I head outside to fire up the cooker how these look so we definitely got all the sides and I failed to mention earlier before I season these I hit them with some Worcestershire as a binder and just rubbed it all over let them sit for a couple minutes soak it up a little bit just adds a little moisture to the outside of meat a little bit of flavor obviously because Worcestershire goes great with beef and it helps your rub stick so I got all sides covered and that black pepper and that Montreal steak rub is nice and coarse. So as these cook down, they're really going to develop a nice bark and have a nice crust to them. They're going to be delicious. They're already smelling good and they're not even close to being cooked. So I'm excited to see how these turn out. So now we're going to head outside. We're going to fire up the cooker and get these things going so that they're done in time for our Father's Day barbecue. All right, everybody, we are now outside. Hopefully, this weather holds out. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Got the Grill of Grill Silverback all ready to go. We're going to get it rolling here. I'll just turn it on. And we're going to go to 250 today. And we're going to switch over to that mode 2. Like I said in my previous video, I prefer mode two in the beginning of my cook so I can get some more smoke flavor and then once we end up having to finish it off if we end up wrapping or anything like that we switch over to the PID mode which is mode one um, if any of you guys are interested in the silverback I can do a review video just uh, drop a comment saying hey I want you to talk about this or go over what you like what you don't like anything like that but while this thing is heating up, coming up to temperature, 
our beef ribs are resting on the counter, just letting that rub set in, and then we're going to uh, come out here and throw them on. And I'll tell you what we're going to do as far as spritzing and monitoring. All right, we are back. I have my assistant with me now. Still in her Moana nightgown. Yeah. Looking beautiful. Her brother's still asleep, right? Yeah. All right. My mom is resting. Mom's resting. Okay. So, what do we have going on here? We are going to show you the things that we just put on the grill. And I did not meant to touch it because it is hot. It is 2 degrees and it's going around out to 30 degrees. Gonna get even hotter. All right, so we have our silver back. It came up to temperature. It only took about 15 minutes, but it dropped down because we opened that lid up to get these in here. So we have our four slabs of beef ribs on there. We're gonna cook them at 250, and we are cooking over Gorilla Grills competition pellets again. And what we're going to do is just monitor these. We're gonna open the lid maybe every hour or so and check on them. We're just gonna spritz with plain water as needed and we're going to just cook them until that bark starts to form and they get to the point where we don't want them to get any more bark or crust on them and then we'll show you what we're gonna do after that. All right, so it's been just about an hour. Our silverback is holding right about 250. Open the lid and see what we got going on. And they are starting to look really nice. Starting to develop a nice bark. Now all we're just gonna do is spritz these with just plain water, keep them moist, and let them keep cooking. They still got a little while to go. And I use plain water for my spritz. I know people like to use apple juice, apple cider, beef broth, you name it, you can put it in a spritz. This is what works for me personally. I know I've said it on my last video. I like plain water. I want most of my flavor profile and my seasoning to come from my rub or if I use an injection, my injection. I strictly want to use my spritz to keep moisture on the food. Plus, if you use something like apple juice, those sugars can tend to burn. And for me, it makes an even bigger mess to clean up in the cooker. So I like water. It works for me. Do what works for you. That's the best thing you can do for any type of cooking. So we'll check back on these in another hour. All right, just checking back in. Another hour has gone by, so we're at the two-hour mark. Right, they are looking excellent. Those bones are really starting to draw back. Starting to render down that fat. We're just gonna give them one more spritz, close the lid, and we'll check back on them maybe another half hour. See where we're at, see if it's time to wrap or not. All right, another update. It's been just a little over a half hour. And they are almost to where I want them. I'm gonna give them one more spritz, check them in another half hour, and then I think we're gonna be ready to wrap these up to get them nice and tender. All right, we are back. Right about three hours, just pulled them off. The bark is as far as I want it to go. I don't wanna risk drying these out. So now all we're gonna do is wrap them up in some pig butcher paper I like using the butcher paper instead of aluminum foil because you don't want to ruin that bark that you worked really hard to make. So the butcher paper is going to allow these things to steam a little bit and cook through and get nice and tender, but also preserve that bark that we worked hard on. So we're going to wrap them up nice and tight. We're going to go put them back on the cooker, keep it at 250, and then we're just going to start probing them. We want to get them right around 203 to 205 so that they're nice and tender. It should be sliding in just like a, like a hot knife through some butter. And then uh, we'll let them rest in the cooler and then slice them up. All right, we have our beef ribs all wrapped up in our butcher paper. 
you see that fat is going to really soak into there and baste these as they finish cooking. We switched over to PID mode so we can maintain that nice constant 250 once I get this lid closed and we're just going to let these things go until they're nice and probe tender. Check back with you when they are done. Alright, we just pulled these out of the cooler. They took another about three hours to finish up in the butcher paper. Had them resting in the cooler for about a half hour so we're going to unwrap them and see what they look like. They were probe tender at about 205 degrees, and they look phenomenal. Pull back from the bone, nice and tender. Go ahead and slice these up. And look at that. Fell right off the bone. Can't plan for stuff like that. That's real life stuff. Let's try this again. Smoke green. Extra juicy. Looks good. So what I'm going to do is, it's still pretty hot, but I have my father, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law here. We're gonna slice up this one that fell off the bone and let's get a little Father's Day taste here. See how well I did. Make good use of that one that fell off the bone. Fellas, you wanna come grab a piece and try it? Come on in, gentlemen. Wow. A little hot. Come on and get, get in the picture here so we can all ready taste it. Mm. I have to go for a second piece. What are we thinking? Amazing. Phenomenal. Good? Mm. Not just the beer talking? Very good. <laughs> wow. Outstanding. So I'm going to finish slicing these up. We're going to bring them out Hot to everybody off. else now. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure um, if you like the videos, drop me a comment. Tell me what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Subscribe to all my other uh, all my other social medias. I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. Subscribe all on there. Tell me what you want to see, and uh, leave me positive feedback, negative feedback. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.